joy, peace, tranquility, vibrancy, and wellness. Isn't this what you want instead of constant stress? That's what host Rochelle Lawson is going to help you with on Blissful Living. There are many ways to reduce stress, some you may not even know about. Doesn't a little peace and tranquility sound like just what you've been looking for? Relax for a few minutes with Rochelle. She's the queen of feeling fabulous. Hello and welcome to Blissful Living. This is the queen of feeling fabulous, Rochelle Marie Lawson. And I have a special show for you. As you know, or you may not know, that there's a group that I have in Facebook called the U Factor Tribe. And that group is um, filled with people that are interested in learning more about how they can increase their wellness, wisdom, or wealth, or how they want to share information with others on how they can do that. It's a give-and-take group, so you have questions, you ask them, people in the group um, will answer them if they have words of wisdom for you, or if they need answers answers the question, um, they'll put their questions in, and everybody shares this wonderful information on how we can build and sustain our wellness, wisdom, and wealth. And so this show is comprised of a guest from one of the members in the U Factor Tribe group that I have on Facebook. And before I get to her, I um, just want to tell you a little bit more about today's show. So we're going to have a really nice conversation, and the guest is going to share her words of wisdom and expertise with all of you. So this might be a wonderful time to sit back and relax, um, grab something to write with, Maybe get your favorite beverage, light a candle, incense. Just really get in a really nice, comfy, cozy spot so that you can absorb the information and the wisdom that's going to be shared in today's show. Now, before I get to the guest and before we start our conversation, I want to thank our sponsors of the show. The show is being sponsored today by Blissful Living for You. And Blissful Living for You is a... A dream lifestyle, holistic wellness, wisdom, and wealth company. And they have some wonderful things that can help you sustain um, wellness, sustain your wisdom, or increase your wealth. So if you're interested and you're having some issues in any of those areas, you want to check out Blissful Living, the number four in the letter U, dot com. The next sponsor is a telecommunications company. It's been a sponsor of the show for quite a while, and they are located in the heart of Silicon Valley. They've been in business for 30 years, and they are a telecommunication installation company that specializes in voice, data, fiber optic network installation, as well as wireless systems, speaker systems, audio, video, um, anything that has to do with the way we communicate with our loved ones, and our clients today. So if you are in need of some really great services in network distribution, whether you have some moves, changes, additions, or new construction going on and you want to have your telecommunications network set up uh, to your specifications, then I suggest you connect with All Day Cable Incorporated located in San Jose, California, Harder Silicon Valley, and that is at alldaycableinc.com. So let's get started with today's show because, like I said, it's a special show because I'm honoring one of the members of the group we have on Facebook called the U Factor Tribe. And, again, the U Factor Tribe is all about helping us to build and sustain our wellness, wisdom, and wealth, such as this podcast, Blissful Living, is all about. And so let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Today's guest, her name is Irene Bassberg, and Irene was born in Russia, and she immigrated to the United States at the age of 12. When she first came to the United States in 1979, she was living in Providence, Rhode Island, and um, there she found a passion for hairdressing. Then she wanted to push her career a little further, so she began to move west and ended up in California and really, um, really at a very young age stated that she wanted to become a hairdresser and to get paid for doing her dream, which was to become a hairdresser, was all in the line, in the cards, and on her path, so to speak, for her. However, 
uh, when she was 23 years old, she was in a car accident and she was hit by a drunk driver. And the experience of that accident uh, gave her an experience that I'm going to have her share with us on the show. But it also allowed her to open up a part of her wisdom that maybe she wasn't quite paying attention to. And she says her first decision was um, she needed to find happiness. She realized she wasn't happy and she needed to find happiness. And so she did some things to to recreate or restore happiness within her. And so with regards to that, Irene um, has taken time to really um, go through her life and and um, be present with what has come across, come across her path, such as a car accident, divorce, separation, things of that nature. And so what I'm bringing Irene here today for is for her to share her words of wisdom behind staying true to her purpose and traveling down her path of bliss, even though the path may have not been always as blissful as she would have liked it to be. Um, she's learned some very wise things, and the wisdom that she shares in the U-Factor Tribe is something that I want her to share with all of you, as well as what her business is and how she can help you with that as well. So, Irene, first of all, I should say welcome to the show. Great to have Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. And um, so, you know, I opened up the show in, in, in telling the listeners a little bit about, you know, what kind of led you on your journey today. But first of all, I want you to share with the listeners, you say, you know, you came from the, from Russia and um, you decided, you know, you found that when you were young, you had this passion that you wanted to do hair. What about doing hair or becoming a hairdresser was so intriguing to you? Well, um, I was 11 years old, and um, that's when I found passion for hair. And, you know, in such a young age, I didn't understand the concept, what it means. But as I got older, I realized I want to make women feel beautiful right where they are. And, you know, when your hair looks good, we feel good, right? Right. (laughs) You know how that is, right? Right. Hair is one of the things that women take it personally and you know we want it it's the simplest way to make ourselves feel empowered and as I got more deeper into my craft I realized how empowering that is Mm -hmm. how hair makes us feel either sad or happy joyful you know strong weak there's just so many different layers and Hair is energy, right? Right. Well, that's, how right. I, that's how I look at it. So now when you decided, like, you, okay, so you, you, you know, decided you wanted to become a hairdresser and you realized that um, one of the things that women, that gives women a lot of confidence is really the appearance of their hair. And so um, did you discover that with in regards to, um, empowering women through making their hair look beautiful. Was there other wisdom being um, bestowed upon you when it came to working with with women or working with hair in regards to women and things that they were sharing with you? Oh, yeah, all of it about together. You know, it's a special thing between a hairdresser and, a, and uh, it's, you know, customer, these They become family. People come in and walk in and sit down in my chair. And even before I even touch their head, they share the most intimate and personal um, feelings and emotions. And it's like therapy. So, you know, 18 years old, I kind of grasp what I'm doing. It's just beyond the hair. It's, It's this bond. It's like therapy. Women Oh, it's so it's even hard to put into words. It's a feeling that it gives me, and a feeling that I give right. my customer. It's like a almost like a healing rebirth when you right, right, <laughs> right, you know, right. Be, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I know, I, I know. I've gone to the you know beauty shop, so to speak. I remember being a little girl going to get my hair done, and you know, just watching 
the different hairdressers interact with their clients. And it did seem to be very therapeutic for some of the women sitting in the chair. I think both ways with regards to the conversations. But also when I got older and was, you know, getting my hair done, going into the conversations you would hear, people would have, it was really interesting. So it does become like a therapeutic type of thing to, you know, not only get your hair done by your hairdresser, but to engage in the conversation, um, oh. you know, up, right. And, then the, and yeah, and it gets so deep, strangers sharing their most personal and deepest feelings and emotions. They don't feel not judged. And I'm honored that people trust me now with their most deeper secrets. You know, some of them may be too much information. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, but again, <laughs> it's, the, it's the trust that they have in you, and it's, that's it's, right. You know, it's therapeutic. Yeah. So, we cry, um, we laugh, we go through journey <laughs> of raising children. You know, right, it's, it's just, right. So now, um, do you still, um, you still, I take it, you still doing hair? I, I am doing hair part time now. Okay. And so now, um, what have you transitioned in with regards to? Um, moving from doing hair full time to doing hair part time. Well, okay, so uh, you've mentioned my first car accident, um, and then I had a second car accident like twenty years apart, and both oh, wow. ac- and so both accidents really has changed my life. And it's actually the first car accident is the beginning, and the second car accident. It, it's in the end, but to a beautiful rebirth again. So, right. um, my so I basically have to share a little bit about my first car accident to to get to the second. I'll do it as fast as I can. And okay, um, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to ask so, you. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the experience with the the first car accident because there was an yeah. experience that you had. Yes, it was. So at 23 years old, I was in my first car accident. It was pretty bad. Um, I was broadsided by a drunk man. I was in the passenger seat. The Hold on. Oh, my God, it gets me all. <laughs> Every time I talk about it. Well, take some, take some nice, slow, deep breaths. Oh. And, yeah. yeah just... So the first car accident, uh, I basically should have died. Uh, my car was smooshed. Um, my chair was moved to my husband, and I was kind of Joe's alive. I basically saw the whole entire car accident out of my body. Um, I went through wow. the tunnel. I saw the light. I saw Jesus. I had a conversation with him. Uh, oh, it brings a lot of emotion because I haven't talked. I don't really talk about it because it's just, you know, it's a very sensitive thing. And people, um, you know, it's hard to believe if you haven't experienced the, your Right. Right. So, first okay, hand. I'm going to help you. Yeah, I'm going to help you through this because I know it's it's kind of an emotional, it's an emotional experience for you. So with regards to your experience, um, and after, I'm going to say shortly after the car accident, what from the car accident and your experience with, um, you know, going through the tunnel and, and the light, what what did that lead you to after your car accident? Well, I was basically reborn. I had to find myself. I have to heal myself. I decided that I was not in the best marriage. You know, I was very young when I got married. And, um, you know, 21, what do you know, right? You don't know much. <laughs> and, uh, right. Um, so I went on this incredible journey of self healing, self acknowledgement, self worth you know, mindset, uh, ended up being a single mother at 23 with a baby girl and still trying to pursue my dream of becoming, you know, a, a better hairdresser, owning my own business. And um, it wasn't easy. You know, I had to be determined to 
prevail, is that the right word to use, and just push through the hardest times and give myself a pep talk because I was basically on this journey by myself. My parents didn't understand what happened to me. And the experience was so huge. You know, I'm Jewish, and it might not have anything to do with that, but I wasn't brought up religious. And then I see this icon that's telling me that it's not my time to go, that I need to come back, and I need to learn, and I need to teach, and I need to guide people to their higher power, their well-being, their healing. I mean, you know, it's a lot of responsibility to have. Right. So now what, so what, so what, what was um what was one thing that you can share with the listeners cuz i know you know a lot of people have um you know go through different difficult, difficult times throughout their life everybody has gone through some point in their life where it's been extremely difficult and there was something that kind of just kept them moving forward i always tell people it's not the big steps you take in the moment of these challenges it's the little tiny steps that could be millimeters nobody can barely measure that keeps you moving forward so what was something that as you were going through this very difficult time what was something that you did that you can share with the listeners that helped you to keep moving forward well first of all um the voice of god that told me that wasn't my time to go that i need to continue you know learning that was like the biggest uh, uh message you know i could hear it speaking to me and then you know i knew that i had a I had a goal. I had a dream of owning my own salon. And I had a baby that I had to show that, you know, giving up is not an option, that we can do this. You know, we we mm-hmm. can do it. And baby steps better than no steps, you know. Just take right. a deep breath and move forward. And we don't have to run to our success. We, need, we can crawl to our success, right? Right, right. But, but, but but the biggest, like the biggest thing, is the voice of God. That I mean, that that's. I mean, it's not simple, but it is as simple as it was because I could hear it. You have to keep on moving. You have to keep on learning because there's a bigger plan for you. Right. Right. Wow. So, so you just basically just kept moving forward. Now, did you do any type types of meditation or oh. any, um, oh. you know, spiritual sure. practices? Absolutely. I start I start reading books. I started meditating. I the Celestine Prophecy, if you heard of it, it was life changing for me. It created the spiritual energy around me. Therapy. Uh but I had to go through therapy because it was a many different issues that I couldn't handle on my own. So right. yoga diet change. Um I became vegan eighteen years ago. Um, So all of those things, just kind of like allowing myself to feel all kinds of emotions, not blocking anything, acknowledging the pain and the blessing and the healing. Wow. I I mean, I I think that's, that's good. That's wonderful to hear. So you listeners out there, you know, Irene is sharing with us her story that kind of changed her life the one incident and one instance that changed her life so now um and how she came and how she came through it and so now she's able to you know share with all of us like the words of wisdom of no matter what you do just keep moving forward no matter where you are on your journey or in your challenge just keep moving forward it doesn't mean that you have to take baby big large steps you can take baby baby steps but just the forward momentum will help pull you through so now Irene you mentioned something about um changing your eating was this part of um the wisdom that was shared with you or the enlightenment that was shared with you or was this part of something you did with regards to um just learning how to be healthier, going through, you know, meditation and doing yoga and, and, you know, changing your diet so that your diet is more in line with, you know, your body type. What was it, um, what, what was it a combination of, or was it the, the diet and then the diet led to the other things? Well, it was combination. So as I was going through my journey from my first marriage, and divorce and, you know, that feeling of uh, disappointment that led down for myself because, you know, didn't believe in divorce. 
And I remarried at 30 and uh, had another baby. And then, you know, things happened and that marriage didn't work out for whatever reason. And at 37, I was second time divorced, depressed, had anxiety, uh, 40 pounds overweight, uh, was dealing with my oldest daughter, wasn't the most easiest child, and just fell into this really ugly space in my life and felt hopelessness. And it's a funny story. So I get home and I turn on the TV and Jack, Jack Nicholson, you know, the Jews guy, probably didn't right. pronounce his last name correctly. He's standing in my living room on the TV and going, if you want to live healthy, happy, alive, Jews. <laughs> 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 Jews. And you know, he's, you know how he did that video, how he flexed his arms and he goes, go get your juicer, start juicing, the juicer man. And Guess what? I had two pennies to my name. I went and got the juice. It was $99 at uh, Target, and my life changed. I did a juice oh, wow. detox at 37. I became a vegetarian. Then I became a vegan. And just the whole path kind of was like, that's where I was supposed to be. This is how I was supposed to eat. It changed everything for me. That's where the yoga intensified. That's where the meditation became cleaner and more awakened and deeper. And, um, yeah, and it was just an incredible moment in my life. And decided to get a divorce. Um, you know, my salon was already, the dream of owning my salon was already there. So I succeeded on my bucket list three years sooner than I wanted it. And it just, that juicer thing, Completely changed my life. <laughs> so the juice, so, so we're gonna blame it on the juice, the juicer, the, the juicer, juicer man. But, but that's great to hear because again, here you were going through, you know, all of these challenges um, on your path, and things were being presented to you in a fashion that were somehow nudging at you, and you paid attention, and you know, your life began to change. Now, I want to go back to, with regards to, you did mention that, um, you know, you wanted to, a dream was, of course, to do hair, be a hairdresser, and then to own your own salon. And so, in the midst of um, the challenges, you know, I'm sure the salon, you became the salon owner after your first car accident. Yes. What, what was, um, something that you can pull from the experience of that that opened up the gateway for you to stepping in to becoming not, you know, just an independent contractor, so to speak, but a business owner. So um, it's American dream, right? And our parents yes. brought us here in 1979 to have the American dream to, to be fulfilled. So in Russia, I would never be able to own a salon. We are Jewish, like I said before, and the discrimination level for Jewish people there was huge. So we couldn't go to good schools, couldn't get the best jobs, even though we were qualified. So our parents sacrificed their life for us and brought us to this beautiful country that we called home, the land of opportunity. And the, the goal, the dream is to own your own business. So, and my one, just a little further, because my dad doesn't have boys, so I promised him as a young girl that he's going to see his name in light. So that was another wow. little... <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Yeah, so that was my other little push to, to, to make sure that I fulfilled the dream. And my salon was Vagsburg Salon. And it was in light and big name and... You know, those fluorescent lights is gluing, glow in the dark. And I, that was such a beautiful thing for me to show my dad that not only, you know, I, I created my dream, but his name is on light. And the America dream is possible if you set your mind to it and with hard work and you do not allow the doors to be closed, you will push through them. Anything's possible. So now... um now, what was what is something you can share with someone that may be listening that is, you know, feeling a little challenged, may want to give up with regards to, you know, opening up 
in living their dream or stepping into their purpose. Um, what what is something that you would share with that person right now um, that you did or you learned or you witnessed or you experienced that just pushed you forward when you were feeling like you wanted to give up? You know, uh, I don't know. I go, I go back to that little voice that told me giving up was not an option. Baby steps is uh, baby steps better than no steps that, you know, the, I guess for me is the American dream and the sacrifice that my parents made to bring us here, right? They left their mom and dad back home in Russia. And so that's what pushed me towards that, that I knew the sacrifice that my parents made. And, you know, I also can tell someone that's listening, you know, everything you need is within you. You got this. Uh, don't let the fear of failure stop you from from creating your dreams it's possible in this country so don't take it for granted the only way you can fail is not doing it right 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 let go of that you never know yeah so then let go of that noise in your head that's saying you cannot do it listen to the baby tiny whisper that says yes you can and make that loud so that's what i had to do because as much as I had support from my parents, they didn't understand what I was doing. I mean, they wanted me to be a professional in nine to five, and I'm here the wild child. <laughs> 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 I want to have a salon, and I want to, you know, do this. I want to work for the best hairdresser in town. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I think out of the box. I'm not a typical Russian person that kind of follows the rules. I break them. Right, and or create your own, right? I'll create my own. So, like, you know, please don't be afraid. Go for it. You got this. Anything and everything is possible. If you I feel a go of fear, right? If you you have to let go of the fear. And I, I and love also, it. I think I think what you're saying is, is is so true with regards to having to let go of your fear and just go for it. But and, um, you and, know, there's also Um, more so share with us more yeah and live for yourself forget about what people think right don't you know we all want approval from our mom dad and the immediate circle but you know something don't worry about it because they can understand what we're doing right and it's not for them to understand you know and i you know i talk about all the time you know if we're living for others we're not living for ourselves Oh, say that one more time. Bam. We're not, <laughs> if we're not living for others, we're living for ourselves. So we don't need approval from others. We only need approval for ourselves. And that was a big right. deal for me because in our community, we live for the neighbors. My mom always told me, Irene, don't do this. Irene, brush your hair. What are you wearing? The neighbor's going to say something about it. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> right, 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 right. But you know that's how um, that that was their generation with regards to just um, you know th- worrying about what others thought. You know, yeah, uh, about you know something you did. I was kind of like a rebel myself, and that um, you know I just did what I wanted to do, um, and you know. But there were times that I did think about you know, what others would think or how others thought or whatever. And then, you know, that little voice in my head would say, to hell what they think, just do it, right? You know, but there are times where I did think and I did contemplate and I did let it not really hold me back, but say slow me down. Um, and then that, always that little voice in my head would be like, to hell with what they think. They don't live your life. You, you know, you, if you, you, you have to live your life, like what you say, you have to live your life for you because no one else is living their life for you. So if you don't do it, then guess what? Your life doesn't get to be lived, right? And, and, and you don't get to serve your purpose. And when I let go of that, you know, you, when you brain into you, bread into you, right? It's hard because that's little, right. you know, and and I said, you know, it doesn't really matter because I, I have to be happy. They're going to talk about it. You know, they're going to talk about it you're successful, right? And they're going to talk about mm-hmm. it if you're not successful. So might as well right. just be. 
<laughs> right, exactly. They're going to talk about yeah. you anyway, so no you might as well do what you want to do. That's, thank you for sharing that because I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, maybe going through something right now and feeling a little, you know, maybe fearful or holding back or don't know what to do or can't tap into, you know, the wisdom um, that is trying to come forward within them but just can't because of all the external noise. And for you sharing That's right. your you know, information about, you know, just words of wisdom and just little sayings is, is great because you never know whose life you may change with just something you say. We may take it for granted, but that what you may say, may have said may mean a lot to someone that's listening. So now what, because I, I think in our Youth Factor Tribe group, and again, you guys, you know, Irene is a prominent member in the Youth Factor Tribe and she always posts and she's very receptive and responsive and has wonderful things that she shares and if you can tell from her conversation she's just a wonderful giving person and wants everyone to succeed just like her and wants to empower everyone to succeed just like her so what I'm saying is um, I'm pulling her out and I'm pulling her words her a little bit of Irene out for all of you so that when you go visit the Youth Factor Tribe on Facebook um, and it's the letter U factor tribe. When you go there, you'll get a more um, well-rounded, I guess, experience of the the people that are in there and what we do and how we engage in it and interact. And then when you see Irene, you'll be able to place her face and all of this with her voice on on this show. So now I say this just to give you guys, you know, background, as I said, and to give you a little flavor of her personality. But now I want to ask you, Irene, who inspires you? Uh, You know, people that don't give up, people that think out of the box, people that fight through their darkness moments. That's who inspires me. I mean, you know, um, Oprah inspires me. Um, there's many. Um, she, to me, is the most incredible woman. Uh, I look up to her. I used to watch her show when I didn't even understand English completely, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, um, like she has changed my life so many ways. Just what she's been through, and, you know, she was one of the first women being, uh, and especially being African-American women, to have her own TV show. Like, what an incredible role model for right. all of us, right? And right. just just so many confirmations that, you know, giving up is not an option. She constantly talked about her struggles, right? She inspires me tremendously. That's a celebrity, Right. right? But right. everyday women and men that have been through the darkest times, and many of them on my page that I look up to and doing amazing things through through their struggle and and uh, in, inspire me to continue being who I am. You know, they're my inspiration. So the people that don't give up, like keep on fighting and taking those baby steps and seeing the glass that's overflowing. With joy, right. even though it's empty, right? Right. I love that. That's beautiful. I love that. So people that don't, people that don't give up, people that have that don't give up attitude and keep moving forward, are people inspiring to you? And which is, and, and you name Oprah, but the fact that you say it like that, it's you know that can be your neighbor next door, the little kid down the street, or exactly. you know, like you know, a little kid first trying to learn how to ride their bike. You know, they just keep, they just don't give up. They just don't, they just keep going at it and going at it. I remember when my kids were little and um, my daughter, she was trying to learn how to ride her bike without the training wheels. And she just, she had, she wanted to do it before her, her friend next door did it. And so she just kept trying and trying and trying. And then finally she got it. You know, she'd fall, she'd get up, but finally she got it. And then she was gone. And just the exuberant look on a little kid's face when they accomplished something like that. When I see that, something like that, and if I'm having a day or even if I'm not having, a, you know, a challenging day, when I see that, that just lifts me up. And not only with children, but just when I see someone so happy um, that they've accomplished something and they didn't give up, that really inspires me as well. So, yeah. 
Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Now, with regards to your positivity, because you have a lot of positive energy, and I can feel it, and I'm sure that people listening to the show can feel it as well. Um, share with us, first of all, what do you do to stay positive? Uh, you know, it's it's all the dark moments, right? Right. It's all, all the dark moments that um, makes me be super duper extra happy because I know how it feels not to be, right? I, I know um, how to lose everything. I know how to have nothing. Um, you know, it's in, you know, I kind of have to bring my second car accident into the conversation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, losing everything I, over and over again, right? And um, the second car accident truly, truly created the Irene that I am today and the joy and the happiness that I uh, try to enlighten others is when you lose your health, your friends, your financial stability, and when you basically... Um, lose your health and in return the only thing you got was chronic pain and no hope and like literally just want to give up and when you find that light again you become this happy you become this Mm -hmm. you know um embrace this kind of like anything is possible because you've seen the worst right you fought through the worst you had to kind of dig deep into your own deepness to be able to pull yourself out. And, you know, like I've said in my post and in my videos that I pr- praying when you don't even believe in the prayer and then God sees that you're fighting to find the light <laughs> mm-hmm. makes me this happy, makes this joy in my life. I don't know if I'm, you know, if I'm, understanding explaining it the best way but that's the only way i can explain from the darkness this light enjoy happening i remember where i've been through and what it took to get where i am today so i try to be super super happy every day wow i love that i love that i I, again that's wonderful words of wisdom with regards to staying positive and how to do it you know you just you just think about um how blessed you are and in that moment of time, and it keeps you moving forward. And everybody has experiences where, like I said, they're going through challenges and things of that nature. But if you can find just one little thing in your day um, and hold on to that positive moment or positive experience, it'll begin to grow. And every time you think of something, um, if you can put that thought and bring that thought to the forefront of your mind, that helps your positive energy to keep growing and expanding. So it's beautiful. Um, you know, you've heard about, um, I hate when I keep saying um, but you've heard about the gratitude journals, how people write the gratitude journals. Is that something that you do? Is that something oh, that you're familiar with? I absolutely. I've done it for years in manifestation, visualization. I believe in all of those things. That's so important, counting the little blessings. That's what makes us happy, right? But we, right. Not, I feel like we are not taught to cut the little blessings. Where I feel like we're always looking for that big blessing, right? Right, right. So, so I'm right. always just grateful for that. That little, you know, open my eyes, step on my on the floor with no pain, knowing my kids are good. You know, just just knowing that I can have a cup of coffee, right? <laughs> yes. I agree. You know, what's funny is I, um, I'm i not particularly a uh, summer type of girl because um, I'm a, uh, my body type is full of fire. So in Ayurveda, I'm a pitta dosha. So my body type is always full of fire. So summer, when it's really hot, is not my favorite time of the year. But okay. one day I was walking out. And I felt, and it was a, it was, it was going to be a day where it was going to be, a, you know, a hundred plus. I was in, um, in the Bay Area, where I'm from, and so where I live and all that. So I was walking, 
my dog and I'm like, oh, we better get out before it gets too hot. So let me give you, get you a walk. But as I'm walking, you could feel that the heat of the day heating up from the rays of the sun shining on my skin. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't, you know, I'm so glad I when I can't wait till summer ends. But then I thought, you know what, instead of let me flip it around. And I thought, I'm so grateful that I'm able to feel the rays and the warmth of the sun on my skin as I walk. Because there are people that can't do that, that can't get out their house to, you know, feel the sunshine on their skin. Or people that are laying in hospital beds that are sick that would love to be able to just feel the sun on their skin again. And here I am getting ready to complain because it's a hot day, but or it's going to be a hot day, but yet the rays of the sun feel so good on my skin and the fact that I could feel them, I completely was able to turn that around and I felt really grateful for the heat of the day. And amazingly, even though it may have got to 100 degrees that particular day, it di- it didn't feel hot to me at all during that day because I think I had made peace with the heat at least for that day. And so, you know, it's like those little bitty things that we take for granted and we don't often think about. Um, Those are things that I like to capture in my gratitude journal. And that was, that particular day was one of the things that I wrote about in my gratitude journal. So I'm glad you, I'm I'm glad I asked you about that. And I'm glad you shared your experience with the gratitude journal as well, because um, again, that's something People may not be familiar with that or listening to the show. That's something that they can do, and you'll be amazed at what starts coming to your mind as to what to be grateful for. Now, is there any um, anything that you want to share? Because I know you mentioned after your second accident uh, you had experiences with a lot of pain. And I also know that you post a lot about how your pain is diminished or, you know, gone. So can you share with the listeners with regards to how you're helping to minimize your pain, what you're doing? Yes, absolutely. And uh, so, like I said, I was in a car accident um, seven years ago, and that was the continuation from the first car accident. So it was 20 years apart. So it wasn't an accident that all of that happened. And uh, when I got into the car accident, um, the second one, um, I heard God again. And um, I'm sorry, it's not a simple answer. I'm getting there. (laughs) And um, okay, take your time. Yeah, share it. it. We'd love to hear the experience. Okay, great. So when I heard when that happened, the first thing I heard, okay, Irene, you know why this car accident happened. You're not. You're not following your mission, purpose, and passion. You're not keeping the end of your bargain from your car accident, from the first one, because God told me that I have to go learn and teach, right, and bring people awareness to their own wellness and to their own being and to their own joy and happiness. And it scared me because I procrastinated. I procrastinated. I, you know, if we, if people are doing their gratitude journal and also they're doing manifestation, you know, like the secret visualization, but if you're not putting the steps towards it, you're just talking about it, nothing happens. Actually, negativity happens because if you're not practicing what you're preaching, for me personally, I felt like the universe stopped me at my ground because I wasn't doing anything that I said I wanted to happen. So we organized right. my it's, business. It's, yeah, no integrity. That's what I call it. Exactly. Stuff with no integrity. Yes. Yeah. So this car accident happened. The universe took everything from me, my health, my wellness, my work, my love for my work, and chronic pain for five years, nine epidurals, four, four hip injections, uh, sympathetic no block, neuropathy, numbness in my feet, uh, depression, anxiety, lived on all kinds of meds, wanting to kill myself because I never, you know, doctors was not giving me any hope except the epidurals. They said, well, we cannot help you get used to living this kind of life. So, whew, that was a lot in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> nervous oh my god you know I believe it every time when I say it so it just kind of just gave me goosebumps and right. um, I had to dip deep mindset came in everything that I've learned from the past you know 
meditation. Well, I couldn't do yoga because I couldn't move because I was in pain. I couldn't walk more than two steps without pain. And right. so the the mindset had to come differently now, right? How am I going to live life like this and find happiness and joy? So I right. prayed and prayed right. when I didn't believe it. And anyway, um, a friend of mine was Googling some stuff for MS. She has a mess, and she came across this crazy socks, and uh, she sent me down. I thought she was nuts because, but, you know, when you're in chronic pain, you'll try anything. Right, and the because first, you, want, and, you want the pain to go away. You want some type of relief, even if it's just a little bit. You want some type of relief. Exactly, and, you know, I've tried everything and anything that anybody recommended. I have a box full of gadgets. And uh, she sends me the socks, actually October, so finally they were speaking about it. They were too big, and I send it back to her, and I'm preparing to go to Europe, and I don't know how I'm going to do it, and I'm waiting for my epidural, and I'm level like 15 in pain on Oxycontin and Vicodin and Norco. And finally, my socks arrived right on my birthday, November 2nd. Car accident was November 3rd. Seven years ago will be. And, I mean, that's a whole other podcast, what that means, Paul. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I put them on, and seven seconds, life had changed. Wow. And I'm sitting there crying. I'm taking the socks off and putting them on. I'm putting them on, I'm taking them off for like 20 minutes. And I call my beautiful friend. Kim and I said, Jesus just came down and kissed my feet. He just answered every single prayer that I prayed for. And she's crying. I'm crying. And, I'm <laughs> and oh, my God, it was such an incredible moment. And I said, I think I'm going to convert now. And she says, I mean, I love you, Jewish ass. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if I can say that, but I have to yeah, say it. I love you, She's like, I love your Jewish ass and your beautiful relationship with Jesus. You be just the way you are. Oh, that's super <laughs> and, sweet. And, you know, at that moment, I knew that I had to go through all of that stuff that I've been through. This is my lesson. This is my purpose. I had to feel the pain. I had to, you know, lose everything. And, I, you know, and I realized that this is what I was supposed to share, right? The socks, the healing of it, right. the mental, right. the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, to tell people, believe in your prayer. God hears you, but you know he will respond at the right time, at the right place, at the right moment. Sometimes we have to go through some of the pain in order to appreciate the joy and the happiness. See, it's a full circle for me. It's not an easy answer. So I just re-answered your question that you asked me a few minutes ago, what makes me happy, right? <laughs> right, right. But, no, that's great because, again, we can hear the enthusiasm and everything in your voice with regards to your experience on discovering the socks and how they've changed your life. So now what can you say now about the socks? Because you, you've kind of given the listeners the, you know, visualization of how much pain you were in and things of that nature and what you were going through and the medications and the so on and so forth. You can most definitely be one of those people we hear with the opioid addictions, specifically, you know, because you're on OxyContin, which is mega strong. So oh, mega strong. Right. So um, so now that we've come to the, the full uh, experience with regards to the pain and these socks. Are these tell people a little bit more about the socks with regards to how did they help to diminish this pain that you were having? And yeah, so, I'm sure people are out there now are peaking curiosity. Is it something that can take away their pain? They want to know about it. Sure. So, so this is a neurological technology product. So the socks is just a delivery method. We have insoles, we have patches, and obviously we have socks. And there's a proprietary pattern that's put in this product. It's um, technology meets science, and science is like 
almost 50 years old. Technology is brand new, and it's like a proprietary code. The moment it touches the bottom of your feet or certain parts of your body with the patch, it sends a signal to your brain because it's all neuro endings. Our whole entire body is a neuro uh, sensories, right? It's all little nerves that uh, go right. through and flow through. So it connects to the brain in midbrain, and it puts it in homeostasis, equilibrium. So most of us, all of us, do not function in that homeostasis. We are born, but we can't sustain it. So when the brain is on overactivity, like for me, the part of the brain that was an overactive, like on fire, right, was the part that the brain deals with pain. And um, I'm sure you've seen some of our videos. It created the shaking mechanism and the spasms because the body couldn't right. fight it anymore. So this is. The best way I can explain, so the brain was on fire and the socks is water and it comes down in seven seconds. Oh, my goodness. So it, in seven seconds, it creates stability, mobility, range of motion, and balance and pain relief. Consistency of being in homeostasis, that's what makes the pain to go away. So when we're in that mode of homeostasis, our body actually can heal our own selves. And that's what's happening to me on a cellular level. So now, so is this, uh, how often, I mean, how long do people have to wear these socks? Is it's, it all it's day? 20, it's, it's, it's tw the protocol is 21 days, 24-7, and then we ask you to remove them so you can see the difference. But it's, it's a lifestyle. You have to be connected to one of our products, 24-7, because the homeostasis has to sustain itself, right? right. After, after like a year of wearing the technology, your brain is pretty much charged, so it's like a battery. You can remove them once in a while, and, you know, it still works. It, it never goes back to where it was because it's healing on a cellular level. But when you understand what it does to your brain function, and that right. how important it is to be in a homeostasis, you never want to be without them. It, it's not just for pain. It's for everyone. Athletes wear them. Kids wear them. Um, it's about wellness and brain function. So it's very cool. Non-invasive, no chemicals, drug-free. A baby can wear it, and a 102-year-old person can wear it. Oh, my goodness. That's Okay, so now we are at the part of the show where, um, you know, we're coming, we're coming to that, I like to say, bewitching part where we like to share the goods of what people, how people can stay in contact with you, how they can learn more about you, work with you personally, or, you know, get access to these socks that take care of the pain. Now, I want to ask you, is the pain that these socks take care of, is it pain throughout the body? Is it in just the lower extremities? Is it, you know, upper extremities? Is it, you know, maybe if someone having pain in their left shoulder, is the socks going to help with that? Is there anything that you can share um, before we go into the full share with regards to that? Absolutely. It's not about the issue. It's about being in a homeostasis. It doesn't matter where your pain is. It's about keeping the brain in calm motion. We have 40,000 okay. testimonies about all kinds of uh, pain. So it's not about the pain. It's just about making sure that you're in that equilibrium balance. Got it. Okay. So now share with the listeners um, how they can get in contact with you and learn more about you. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Irene Baxberg. Um, it's probably the most easiest way to do it. Say that again now. Repeat that one um, more time. They, uh, your listeners can find me on Facebook. It's, okay. It's, yeah, Irene Baxberg. Okay, so listeners, in case you want to connect with Irene, let me tell you, you can find her on Facebook, Irene Vaskberg, and her name is spelled Irene Traditional, I-R-E-N, like Nancy E, and then her last name is B like Victor, A, K, S like Sam, B like boy, E-R-G, Vaskberg. Find her on Facebook. 
she is also, you can also find her. Um, she plays a lot in the U Factor Tribes, the group on Facebook, and you can find her in there, connect with her there. And that is, again, the letter, I'm sorry, that is, again, the the letter U Factor Tribe. Again, it's the U Factor Tribe on Facebook. And she has... Um, all kind of stuff that she shares in there to help us to, you know, be able to sustain our wellness, wisdom, and wealth. And so, Irene, I want to just take this opportunity to thank you so much for all that you do, all that you shared with us, all the wonderful posts and information you share with us in the You Factor Tribe group on Facebook, and all the information and nuggets of gold that you share with the listeners today here on Blissful Living. Thank you so much for being a guest. Oh, thank you for so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share my story. I feel very honored and blessed and grateful. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you listeners for being here, being present. Please share this show with everyone that you know, those you love and care about, just everyone that you know. You never know that when you share some information or you share something with someone, how it may help them in their life. You never know. That's like I say, take the day, and as you're walking throughout your day, smile at someone. You never know how your smile will change or may change that person's life. You never, never know. So, again, share the show. You never know whose life it may change, and they'll come back and thank you for sharing the show with them. I also want to thank the sponsors, All Day Cable, Inc., at alldaycableinc.com. If you're looking for a great telecommunications installation company that handles the western state um, that has been around for 30 years, so they have some sustainability, then you want to connect with them at All Day Cable, I, and like Nancy, C.com. And our other sponsor of today's show, Blissful Living for you at Blissful Living, the number four and the letter U dot com. Check them out. They have some wonderful things on there to help you as well. Just step into living the life of your dreams and becoming unstoppable. This is everyone, the Queen of Feeling Fabulous. And again, I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. And as Rochelle Marie, the Queen of Feeling Fabulous, says, I am wishing you peace to your mind wellness to your body, and tranquility to your spirit. Goodbye for now. You can find out more about Rochelle on her website, Rochelle Lawson, R-O-C-H-E-L-E, Lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, or at healthhealingwellness.com. Or just click on her websites from the webtalkradio.net page right in front of you. And, of course, you'll want to come right back here next week for another episode of Blissful Living. Thanks for joining us.